So today I want to talk about two more array methods, find and find index. These methods will look at an array, start looping through them, but not necessarily loop the whole way through. Find will look for an item that matches and it will return the item. Find index will look for an item that matches something and then return the position. So in this array that I've got right here called cities, let's zoom in a little tiny bit there. So these are the links for uh, Mozilla Developer Network if you want the references for those methods. I have an array here with uh, a bunch of cities from Turkey and this is the one that I'm looking to match. So I have a variable that's going to contain the thing that I'm looking for. I'm going to call find on this array, look through it, and when I find the match, what the method find is going to do is it's going to return this item from the array. So it doesn't have to be strings. It could be numbers, booleans, objects, functions, whatever you've got in the array, it'll return that item when it finds the match. So my method called on the array cities, I'm calling find. It's going to call this function once for each item in there until it finds a match. As soon as it finds a match, then it stops. So in my function, I'm comparing the variable city with the variable item. If these things have the same value, now I'm using the equality thing here, but if it's a string, these are primitives, they're going to match with two or three. If I find the match, I return true. And this is the signal, just like with the array filter method, this is the signal to know that you found the one that you're looking for. The result of this will be put into the variable match. So if I run this, there we go. I'm writing out that match one, this value right here, was Bursa. That is the matching item. Now find index works the same sort of way. I'm just going to comment this one out just so I don't have too many things in my console. I'll just do the first two lines here first. There we go. So running that, clear and run it again. Here we are. So the item with the matching length was this one. Um, so I'm calling find again, looping through it. Item is passed in. I can pass in all three things, just like with for each, map, filter, reduce. You can pass into this function the item, the index, and a copy of the array as well, or a reference to the array so that you can work with them. I'm passing in item, and I'm comparing this variable here, chars, which is the number seven, with the item length. So as soon as I find something that has seven characters, so the length of the string is seven, then that's what the value is here. Item with matching length at position and tell you. So it's not the position number, but there we go. That's a better way to say it. There we go. So the item with the matching length was Antalya. Okay, so that's find. Find index. This one is going to give us the position number. So I'm calling find index on that same array. It's going to call a function once for each thing until it finds a match. I'm looking for item, convert it to lowercase, index of the letter T. So the first thing I find with the letter T inside of it, I'm using the string method index of to find the position of the letter T inside of each one. If it doesn't find it, it's going to give me negative one. If it does, that it'll give me a value of zero or higher. So it'll tell me what position that character is inside of the string. This is what I'm running here. This is the expression. If this is greater than negative one, then this will return true. And if my function returns true, then the result gets put into here. And the result of find index will be that number. That's what it gives us back. So the number right here is what we're going to get. Clear that off, run it again. Letter T found in item at index one. Arrays start at zero, so this is the second one. So let's go up and look at the array again. So here's number zero, here's number one, and there it is, there's the letter T, found right there. All right, so find, find index. It's a way to find a match. It's a little bit more efficient than doing filter. With filter, the result that you get back is going to be an array. So if you want multiple items returned, Filter is the better method because it's going to give you an array of all the matches. 
Find and find index is just looking for the very first match inside the array. All right, console, I'll comment out the console log statement and come down to my last example here. There is one other parameter that we can pass in with find and find index with both of them. So you put your function inside of here. That's the first thing that you pass in. You can also pass in a second argument here. Now this second argument is called the this argument. It is an object that will be treated as this inside the function. So my code right here, I'm looking at item. That's each item in the array. That's being passed into my function. And then I'm looking at this dot town. So what is this going to be? Well, it's what I passed in here as the second parameter. It's this object that I created right here. So I've got a person object with the name Recep and the town Istanbul. That object is being treated inside of this function as the keyword this. So I'm getting the town property from that object and I'm comparing it to the item from the array. When I find the match, there we go. Oh, sorry. Gotta save the changes. There it is. So Recep lives in matching town Istanbul. There we have it. So person dot name, my object's name property, and match three was the result of cities dot find. We're able to use this argument, whatever this is, it can be a string, a number, a boolean, an object of any kind that we want. It will be treated as the keyword this. Now, one thing that's very important to note here, I did use the old classic JavaScript functions. If I didn't do that, if I were to use an arrow function and I run this again, I get undefined coming back. Undefined is the result when a match is not found. But how could a match not be found? And that is because of the way that arrow functions treat the keyword this. They use the value of the keyword this here where the function is declared. At the time where the function is declared, in the place where the function is declared, it's a lexical this. So right here, at this moment of time, before this function runs, what would the value of this be? Well, it's going to be the global object. If it's in the browser, it's going to be the window object. In Node, it's going to be the global object. The global object does not have a property called town. So I'm never going to find a match because this right here is undefined. And I will never have item that is undefined inside of my array. Item is going to be each of the values in that array, each of the items up here. Ankara, Istanbul, Antalya, Bursa, Trabzon. One of those things, item is going to be one of those things. This, in order for this to work, I have to use the standard function. I cannot use the arrow function to do this. If I leave it as this regular function and I run my code again, now it works. So just be aware of that. If you are going to use the this argument for any of the methods with arrays, find, find index, map, uh, for each filter, reduce, any of those, they'll allow you to put in this, this argument as the additional one. And if you do that, you have to make sure that you're using the function, which is not an arrow function. All right. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will leave a copy of this code in the description, a link to it in the description so you can download it and play with it. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.